let's uh, open up this uh, original one first and see what we've got to work with. Let me go get a, um, a suitable prying tool. Pen detect error. Hey everybody, it's Keith with the uh, L1 Automotive Training Channel. Today we've got something a little different. Uh, so a friend of mine, uh, Eric O, he uh, gave me a call. You guys, you guys may not know him. He's got a real small YouTube channel. Um, you got to look it up, South Main Auto. Probably never heard of it, super small. Um, he gave me a call the other day because he's got a Nissan. It's kind of interesting when he doesn't do a whole lot of Nissans. Uh, the backstory on this is something about APP not working correctly and not being seen by the transmission. Um, other than that, the car ran and drove. It had a code. He determined the PCM was at fault. Um, we actually determined this PCM is just incorrect for the vehicle. So at some point in time, this, this vehicle had a PCM put in it that was incorrect. So here is a correct PCM with the exclusion of one important component. This particular 2005 Frontier is a uh, non-NATS vehicle, has no Nissan anti-theft system. And the only available PCMs with the correct calibrations in them are for anti-theft vehicles. So uh, what I'm here doing today for Eric, converting this theft PCM to a non-theft PCM. Let's uh, open up this uh, original one first and see what we've got to work with. Let me go get a, um, a suitable prying tool. Okay, so we've got both PCMs uh, disassembled. Um, the one with the I here is the immobilizer ECU. Uh, this v this is the correct PCM that needs to go back to the vehicle, um, but this one has a mobilizer, so we need to get the mobilizer data from this one to this one. So in this particular case, we're going to do the safe thing um, by just transferring the chip, which is here, which is a 93C65 8-leg EEPROM, to this board. Um, but for some experimentation purposes later, and I have a couple other uh, PCMs I'm going to mess with. This one needs to go back to Eric so he can fix this customer's car and not be an experiment that has to go from New York to Oklahoma if there's some kind of problem. So we're going to just switch chip for chip here to there and then take this one off this immobilizer one and just, uh, I guess, put it back on this PCM and send it back. i got to find out if I'm sending this one back or not. Regardless, I will be taking... Uh, the EEPROM data from both and saving them and comparing them for use for later. So if I need to create a non-MO again, I can just, you know, in this case, we have one that's I can switch the chip over. In the next case, I may not have an immobilizer, non-immobilizer PCM to do this. So I'm going to save the data from both of these. But what we'll do is we'll compare the data. So I got that one pulled and saved. So I got the data from this 93C65 pulled and saved for the immobilizer ECU, and it is labeled clearly as the immobilizer ECU. Then this one, we're going to do the same thing. And we're going to make sure it's clearly labeled as a non-immobilizer ECU. Okay, so I got all my nerdy EEPROM stuff done. Um, I'm going to go ahead now with uh, removing the immobilizer chip and getting it away from here so it doesn't accidentally get mixed up. All right, so we're uh, zoomed in here. You guys can see up in the corner. Got the captain's tape on to protect all these other things. I don't want to just blow off the board with um, hot air. Technically, you can't really have too much flux. So we're going to set that there, leaving it open because we may, in fact, need some more. So we'll get some hot air going. Um, so we're going to get really hot air, but very low um, blower speed. All right. So, uh, did that very carefully. The point of that was to do the least amount of pressure possible and uh, just to get the device to lift off. We don't want to pull any, pull very hard because you can see these solder contact pads that are on here that are made on this board. They're, uh, they're pretty gentle. So you want to get the solder to be hot and then the, the uh, EEPROM itself will just lift right off the board. So now we're going to repeat this procedure on the um, non-immobilizer ECM, which is the chip we need to get. Flux on there. This one flux on there. Repeat this procedure. 
let's get this put onto the good board. So what we're doing is just carefully setting EEPROM on there right about where it's supposed to be. And a good thing, an interesting thing about uh, about these and, and soldering anything in general is if you spend some time getting the mechanical alignment good first, then you uh, apply a liberal amount of flux and just heat it up, usually the chip will, the solder will suck the chip right into its right spot. It may or may not do it, I hope it does. So now what we're going to do is uh, boot this PCM back up here, right here on the bench. So let me get all this captain's tape peeled up, checking it to make sure we didn't pull up any components with it because uh, you can do that. All right, so it's uh, back all together. We just hooked it up to, and communicated with it. So um, looks like it's ready to pack back up, reseal. I'll spend some time cleaning the board, reseal it, and we'll um, hope for the best. All right, guys. See you next time.